Hello, Alison, and welcome to the Tiara's Tears and Triumphs podcast. Thank you so much for agreeing to come onto the show today and to be a guest. I would love for you to just start off this conversation that we're going to have with just sharing a bit about yourself so that the listeners know a bit more about who you are, what you do, and what brought you to this point in your life now where you're doing the kinds of things that you're doing? Um, well, hello, and thank you for having me. Um, so my name is Alison. I am a mum of four and soon to be grandmother of two. I have my second grandchild due in about 10 weeks time from uh, when we're recording this, um, which is very exciting. I am uh, also a fur mum. I do have a boxer. Um, who is just the loveliest thing in the world. Um, I was uh, actually um, about, well, my eldest child was born eight days after I turned 17. Um, so I was a teen mum. I got married at 17 um, and started my adult life at a very young age. Um, I was a military wife for 13 years and also um, worked in the military myself for a little while. And now I, um, I, I, I should skip back a little bit. Um, after I had um, separated from my husband, I met a wonderful man who uh, unfortunately passed away um, before myself and my kids could move countries to go and be with him. And the loss of him is what sparked um, what I do now. I, I never want another family to not have something that you can hold on to from a loved one that's passed away. I never want a little girl on her wedding day to not have uh, something DNA wise of her dad to help her walk down the aisle on such a momentous occasion, uh, like my stepdaughter and, and my eldest daughter now have to do. Um, and it sounds crazy, but but losing the man I loved actually led me to both of my businesses right now and to what my mission in life is and what I feel called to do. Uh, and it's it's so strange because part of me thinks, oh, you know, like I would give anything for him to still be here, but I wouldn't have the life that I have now if that hadn't happened. Um, so, yeah, I've, I've kind of got to be grateful in a way that, that I loved him and I lost him. And at, at a point in my life where I needed that little bit of strength um, to be lent by somebody else to me, to get out of a marriage that was dangerous and was no good for my children to be in. Um, I didn't see it as you do at the time, you don't see it. Um, and yeah, just to have someone to lend me their strength to, to gain the courage to do what I needed to do for myself and my kids. Um, yeah, I'll always be eternally grateful for. And, and now I have these businesses and this purpose in life that I'm really proud of. That's amazing. Can you tell me a bit more about this business that you have where you have like some DNA as a keepsake for people to have something of value to have with them as a, a permanent reminder of that person that they love, that they have lost? Yeah, I, I actually only discovered the industry about 18 months after Manny had passed away. And the first thing that I, I kind of said to myself is, oh, I wish I knew this existed when he died. Um, he was uh, put into a mausoleum and I would have shaved that man bald. Like if I had known that this was a thing, we, I, that's just what would have happened. Um, and at least then we all could have had something, you know, with his hair in it to, to be able to physically touch a part of him during those moments where you are grieving and you feel crappy and you, you just want to connect with them, you know, and, and you can't. Um, but I didn't know. And so now that's my mission is to reach a million people every year not necessarily to give me their money, but just to educate them on my industry and all of the ways that it can help. So 
I specialize in hair and ash, um, cremation ashes, um, because that is why I started this business. And that's where my passion is, is to helping loved ones be able to hold on to their, their, their past, the loved ones that have passed. Um, but I also specialize in pregnancy and infant loss, uh, keepsakes too for women who have unfortunately never been able to, to hold their baby, um, hear them giggle, watch them take their first steps. It is something that for some reason is still very unspoken about in, in our society. Um, it's, it's almost something that people are made to feel ashamed about and, and to kind of keep to themselves. But I think it's because people around them don't know what to say and they don't want to say the wrong thing. So the easy thing to do is, well, let's just not talk about it because we don't want to upset them. Um, and what I've learned through this business is that's actually the opposite of what most, most parents want. They want you to use their baby's name. They want you to ask, you know, whether, especially in the, in the case of, of stillborn babies, um, you know, who did they look like? What dreams did you have for them? Um, you know, to include their name on Christmas cards, something so simple that just shows that the loved ones that are around supporting them also feel that loss and also mm -hmm. feel, you know, that there was a baby here. It was present. It had a heartbeat. It was loved. It just stopped, you know, its little heart stopped too soon. Um, and I just, I wanted women, especially in those early 12 weeks that didn't have anything to show for it. Um, you know, they hadn't felt kicks yet. They hadn't, I mean, they probably had morning sickness, but they didn't have anything to show for it yet. And I wanted them to have something that represented the fact that, again, your baby was here. You know, you loved it. You, you nurtured it. You cared for it. You probably sang and spoke to it. Um, and yet when we lose someone we love, no matter whether it's in that situation or, um, you know, a friend, a family member, it kind of leaves this hole within you that you, you just can't fill. It, it's impossible mm -hmm. um and over time i think it it shrinks maybe or maybe you just learn to kind of put a, a band-aid over it to help it heal but it never actually goes away um but can i share can i share my own personal experience with this now um I, this is with my first pregnancy, I'm a mum of four kids too. Um, with my first pregnancy, I, um, I started bleeding seven weeks into the pregnancy. So I'd only just found out that I was pregnant after, you know, six months of trying, 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 hey, you know, finally, yes. And so th this baby it was so wanted you know we really really wanted to have this baby it was so intentional and I started miscarrying and when um I got to you know the, the hospital and it, yeah they confirmed it they said yeah you, you know you're losing your baby and um, and I was absolutely devastated, devastated. I was crying. I think I was in bed for like the week after was my grief was, I just had never felt grief like it before in my entire life. Um, and I was crying out to God saying, God, you know, please, please just give me back my baby. All I want is my baby. Please give me back my baby. Now, my story, you know, my story is really unusual because I did have my prayer answered a week after I'd I'd had a full DNC. So they, you know, scraped out my insides um, so that, you know, any remaining bits of you know an embryo would be removed anyway the results were a bit off and so my obstetrician said you know I want you to go and have another ultrasound there's something not quite right with your results and I went and had the ultrasound and um, they said you've got a healthy eight-week gestation in your uterus um, there was a tiny nick in the amniotic sac so I was on tenterhooks for the entire pregnancy after that